For many years, station wagons were the vehicle of choice for individuals who bought cars to transport their families. And perhaps peak wagon occurred in the late 1960s, early 1970s, before the van craze came about. Wagons were not only comfortable and roomy on the inside, but you could also hook up your trailer to them and tow it to the local campsite, or if you had a boat, you could tow that to the local boat launch. So they provided families with great ways to see the USA and also have a lot of recreational fun. On the Ford side of the house, Ford offered two primary wagons, the Country Squire from the Ford Division and the Colony Park from the Mercury Division. Lincoln did not offer a wagon from the factory. In other words, if you wanted to transport your family in luxury, the best that you could do was order a Colony Park. And in a number of years, there were a couple interior trims for the Colony Park, a base level interior that was similar to the standard marquee, and then there was an up-level luxury trim group that had an interior which was pretty similar to the marquee bromes of the era. The picture here I'm showing is of my 1974 Colony Park with the luxury trim interior. And there's a number of interesting elements to this. The first is that if you got the luxury trim interior, you got super plush carpeting, as you can see here, something that you really couldn't get in a competitive wagon from General Motors or Chrysler. You also got the nice door panels and overall trim on the inside, but there was one important feature that was introduced only by Ford that you could only get on their wagons. And that was in the Country Squires, what Ford called the Duraweave upholstery, or what Mercury called here, the Polyknit Vinyl. Actually, I misspoke in that regard because the true Mercury name for this upholstery by 1974 was not just polyknit vinyl, but as you can see here, Dynasty Plush Loom Polyknit Vinyl. What a mouthful. And you could get it in three different colors, as you see, medium blue, medium green, or in the color that you saw in the previous picture in my marquee, which is saddle. Now, what made this polyknit vinyl so unique, and why was it different and such a cool Ford invention? Well, if you bought a wagon from one of the competitive marks, either part of the GM stable of vehicles or Chrysler, they either offered cloth or vinyl upholstery in wagons. And in a number of cases, they would offer different cloth upholstery than what you could get in their regular coupes and sedans. Perfect case in point, a competitor to this Mercury would have been an Oldsmobile Custom Cruiser, and the Custom Cruiser would have had different interior options from the Olds 88 or 98, depending upon how you want to look at it. But those interiors from Oldsmobile, as well as other competitive marks, were just kind of standard upholstery types. As I said, they were either vinyl or cloth. Whereas this interior from Ford was very different. The Duraweave vinyl, or the Polynet vinyl, was an upholstery that actually looked like a fabric. If you just stared at it, as you can see here, it doesn't appear to be a vinyl at all, aside from that little band of vinyl that's kind of in the middle of the backrest but it instead looks like it's a cloth or a fabric. But in reality, it's really pieces of vinyl that are woven together to give you the feeling of cloth, but the durability of vinyl and the ease of cleaning of vinyl. It was a genius idea that only Ford put in their wagons and did it really all the way up until the end. And as I mentioned, it was something that came on the upper end trim, so it must not have been an overly cheap process to construct these types of seats. But I must say that they worked extremely well. This Duranid vinyl or the Polynid vinyl wears absolutely like iron, better than the cloth seats in any of the Ford vehicles of the time. And Ford mentioned that it was easy to clean, and in fact, it was. Perhaps a case in point is that this 1974 Colony Park has about 44, 45,000 miles on it, which isn't that many miles. But as you can tell, the seats here appear to have absolutely no wear on them at all. And Ford also stuffed them with a really good quality foam so that the foam didn't degrade over time and the overall seat remained comfortable for many, many years to come. Now, interestingly, the Duraweave or Polynid Vinyl was available on both the front seat as well as the first set of rear seats in the wagons. And you can see here that the rear seat is similarly cloaked in this polynit vinyl in my Colony Park. 
And the rear seat also is relatively comfortable. I'll explain in a minute why it might not be as comfortable as some of the contemporaneous GM and Chrysler wagons. But it does have that same vinyl on it as the front seat. But one area where Ford, I guess interestingly, didn't put that polyned vinyl was on the absolute rear seat, those side-facing rear seats in the back area of the wagons where you could only get vinyl, pure vinyl trim on them, as you can see here. So you did get the nice Duraweave or polyned vinyl in both the front and the first rear seat, but you could not get it in those side-facing rear seats all the way out back if you had a passenger wagon that exceeded six passengers. Now, I did mention tangentially that the Ford wagon rear seat might not have been as comfortable as the rear seats in either General Motors or Chrysler vehicles, and that's because Ford, in making their wagons, like this 1974 Colony Park, often employed the short wheelbase version of the platform to construct the wagon. As an example, this 1974 Colony Park has a wheelbase of 121 inches, which was the wheelbase for Ford cars during that time period. Mercury sedans and coupes rode atop a 124-inch wheelbase, but if you got a Mercury Colony Park, you only got the Ford wheelbase, and consequently a little bit less legroom in the rear than if you had a marquee sedan, as an example. So while this Colony Park appears to be an absolutely huge vehicle, and it is a big vehicle, don't get me wrong, it is actually about an inch shorter in overall length then a 1974 marquee coupe, if you can believe that. So the coupe is actually shorter overall than the wagon. This would be in contrast to, let's take a wagon from the Chrysler stable, the Plymouth wagons, where you actually got a Chrysler wheelbase if you bought a Plymouth wagon. More specifically, if you bought a 1974 Plymouth Fury Suburban wagon, that wagon rode atop a 124-inch wheelbase. Whereas if you were to buy just a regular old Plymouth Fury, it rode atop a 121.5-inch wheelbase, which was shared with the Dodge Monaco. The Chrysler New Yorker, as an example, was a vehicle that was on the 124-inch wheelbase. So if you got a Plymouth wagon, you got the Chrysler wheelbase. If you got a Mercury wagon, you got the Ford wheelbase and the Ford wagons. Don't know if that's entirely fair, but that's how it worked out. It was a similar story over at GM, where if you bought, as an example, a 74 Caprice Estate wagon, you got a wheelbase of 125 inches, whereas if you just bought the regular Chevrolet Caprice, the real base was 121.5 inches. In any case, the Ford wagons, despite their shorter wheelbase, were extremely comfortable and plush. And honestly, I would say they were probably the most luxurious of any of the wagons that you could buy in the marketplace. You get them equipped, as you saw, with the luxury trim that included the polyned vinyl on the Mercury's. You could get automatic climate control, which this particular wagon has, power windows, power locks, 460 cubic inch V8, AM, FM, radio, power seats, reclining passenger seats, and a whole host of options even beyond that. You could, of course, get similarly luxurious wagons from General Motors and Chrysler, although not with that cool shag carpeting. But Chrysler did have one interesting feature in theirs, and that was a rear air conditioner. So you could have both front and rear air conditioning in your Chrysler wagon. And that really wasn't something that the competitive makes offered aside from on vehicles like the Suburbans and the vans. But Chrysler offered it not only in their wagons, but also in some of their vehicles as well, like the Imperial lineup, where you could also get a rear seat heater. You had to pick between the rear seat heater or the rear air conditioner, but you could get one of those to supplement the front seat heater or air conditioner. Pretty sweet, but that's a video for another day. Hope you enjoyed this video on Ford inventions like the Duraweave or Polyknit Vinyl. And if you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you.